Do you want to win some of this line tubing that I made in my studio by hand? Watch till the end and I'll tell you how to do it. So I decided to do something a little bit different this week. Um, we're going to use the kitchen and the studio together to kind of combine some different creative processes. I brought my friend in Pyro. Uh, he's an excellent master glass blower. You've known him before from the Pylock video and also that Tripto Cycler. That was insane. You guys should check out that video. Anyway, today we're going to have some fun and we decided to make a lamb roast in the lathe. We decided to take a huge piece of glass and blow it even bigger and then fill it with a bunch of lamb and vegetables and turn that on the lathe while it was under some flames. What recipe would you like me to try next? Make sure you stay to the end to see if you won the tools from last week and learn how to win this line tubing in next week's video. I'm super excited to share this with you guys. There's a little bit of glass blowing, a little bit of cooking, and it was just fun hanging out with Pyro. You know, we even thought about after doing this, <laughs> making a potential product, which would be an undertaking, but it seemed like a fun way to enjoy sort of dinner in a show. I think for me, it's like, I think doing this in the studio with some friends, I would do that again. That'd be fun, but I would just do it uh, for the show. As, like, I mean, I, yeah, it was delicious, right. but I think we could achieve that with, you know, soaking the meat and the juices some other way. Right. Without a $40,000 lathe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think the lathe might make the uh, the whole thing a little infeasible, but I, I overall it was, uh, a success. I really enjoyed the meal. I had a good time making the piece with you, and uh, it it was really better than I could have expected. So yeah, here we're tossing around a few different concepts about the shaping, and then we decided to rather than go with the the football shape, rather more of a cylinder with uh, solid shoulders. And you guys maybe noticed that this is the, the the new armadillo from Mike Peterson. It's actually a prototype, but Pyro has one of these on his lathe too. Uh, he also had one of the prototypes, but check this out. Yeah, I love the it. way that this is working is just amazing. So it's helping us hold the torch and we're, we need to heat up a bunch of glass. This is like maybe 75 by five millimeter tubing and we need to make this big. So we really want to get a lot of heat on this thing because it's gonna gotta be a meal for uh you know four people or something like that yeah this thing put off some real heat when we were building it up i think we took it up to about 150 millimeter it was something like that right um you mean think about it that the tubing is is 75 so it it was probably double that at least yeah yeah it was hot you know this is no joke you know this is i mean it is a joke but it's, it's also not a joke to blow glass like this <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's, it gets really hot when you're working this big, uh, with, there's a lot of radiant heat that comes off of it. And as it got bigger, we needed two torches. Um, and we thought initially, oh, this will be fun, but it was actually necessary to have those two torches on the thing as we got bigger and bigger. Yeah. It was extremely helpful to have that extra heat base, uh, especially while that larger cylinder was rotating around because by the time it made a full rotation, the back side was already cold. Yeah, 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 exactly. And that's something to keep in mind, even when you're working smaller, you guys, what Pyro just said, is that the rotation of the glass, uh, the part of the glass that's coming out of the flame is actually starting to be cool instantaneously. As it's moving out of the flame, it's starting to cool down. So by the time it rotates back, even if you're pretty fast, it still is a different temperature. All right, so we're just heating this up and trying to um, collect a little bit of glass and blow it out. And now we have two torches going, um, two mirages, uh, one mirage hand torch and uh, one mirage bench top torch. And this is the, both of these torches have the switch on them. Um, that, that's also really helpful like that. See the, the switch on the back of the torch is like a foot pedal. I really like that rotating hand switch. I gotta get one of those. Oh yeah, it's cool, right? Do you, would you rather use that than a foot pedal or, or is it just for a travel torch? Uh, well, for the hand torch specifically. And, oh yeah, you like the hand torch one? Yeah. For the lathe, amazing, right? Yeah, it's really great. Yeah. I'll show you guys more details about that in another another video, but um, it's pretty nice. And this also for the lathe, that's why I have this one on the lathe. It's got that switch on the back, which makes it pretty nice. Yeah, uh, so this thing started coming together pretty well. We didn't paddle it until almost two thirds through the process. 
yeah you know the the goal when you're working with glass is to really not touch it with any tool um and to, to let gravity and heat do the whole thing for you um but sometimes you know that that's not always possible tools can help or they can also hinder right yeah a lot of tool marks can be left behind and then make it a lot easier, harder to make the work as clean as we want and here you can see how much heat it really took to get that glass hot yeah that's two mirage flames you guys so maybe some of you guys know the size of this torch you might have this torch at home so that's two of them they look like little lynxes uh because of the size of this thing yeah it's hard to get the scale and the image close up it, it yeah. actually doesn't look as big as it is yeah that lathe is a litten hsj um it's a big lathe i mean it's the biggest one that uh that doesn't have its own legs so and we, we had to make this nice and crisp you know that was really definitely important to, to pyro and me uh was to make this nice and in like a, a beautiful clean shape for you guys because if you can do the shape clean i think it's going to improve the flavor of the meal so here we are taking turns in the hot seat because that when you're sitting down it was definitely hotter so we, we kept switching off as we're blowing out the shape not a lot of people do uh boro this big outside of uh scientific work yeah and uh you know when you see soft glass this big it's usually done in a large furnace yeah i mean this is definitely on the large size and even even for this lathe it's 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 big and um yeah it, it was hot and but the glass moves the same ultimately the glass yeah. moves the same and is and you can scale it up or down as long as your heat base is the same and your movements are the same the glass is going to react the same so you have kind of a structure already of how to blow glass at a different scale right we really sized that up to the limit of the machine too there wasn't really a lot of space to go any bigger yeah otherwise we'd have to move the bunsen right yeah it was getting pretty close to the Bunsen, but check out those Bunsen's. It's, this is a prototype part of the armadillo lathe and bench bench mount system. Um, it's for the Bunsen's. Check out how we're moving them around. And that's, uh, I think, something still in still in prototyping phase right now. Yeah, so right here, making the constriction, uh, we decided to put a constriction on either side, one a little smaller than the other to keep the juices from flowing out when we got the roast going. Yep. Look at that clean bottom nice squares that's that's tricky to do you guys with glass um just in general is to make like a a 90 degree like that but um you know as you get to scale you really have to be smooth with your actions because uh that's that heat to hold the heat evenly at something this large um it takes a little bit of practice takes a little bit of effort all right now we're just evening out the heat base and we're getting everything <clears throat> nice and consistent um you know, so that we can we can start cooking. I'm hungry. So all this work has made me hungry. The first thing that we needed to do is go out to the garden and grab some peppers. So I grew these peppers uh, in in my garden. They're all organic, and it's late in the season here. But uh, we're gonna clip some peppers, make this a little bit spicy. Here's some rosemary that I got going. I'm just gonna sprinkle a little of these homegrown herbs and spices on there. So here's some of our ingredients. We got peppers, onions, some carrots, some potato. We're gonna really make this like a nice winter lamb roast. Right here, I'm tossing the fresh herbs into the lamb, macerating some garlic with salt, and uh, toss that in there so that it can marinate into the lamb a little bit. And then we're gonna uh, mix all the lamb and the vegetables together with some garlic. And here we go. Dropping it in, you guys. The studio smelled so good. Just put, <laughs> putting all the all the lamb. This thing is cold, so we didn't put it in the kiln, but we did Bunsen it and, and flame anneal it. And then, obviously, the Bunsens are going to be annealing it the whole time. Here we go. So, we're going to light the Bunsen and just get this thing cooking. So, we quickly realized that our <laughs> buttons are way hotter than they need to be. So we just turned everything way down and we just let it go for like 25, 30 minutes, something like that, right, Pyro? Yeah, I think it was about 30 minutes. Uh, yes. it, it, it was so great. We let it go and uh, we turned everything way down. Osa is super interested in what is going on on the lathe. Look at that. So as it turns, everything is soaked in that delicious broth that we made in there. 
and it was so mesmerizing like everyone in the studio was just watching this thing and watching this thing go in my mouth watering just watching it again and we were just so getting so hungry with that smell here we go i got my oven mitt on dripping a little bit let's get back to the kitchen and here we go into the bowl there's our onions and carrots all that delicious lamb juice oh my god it smells so good i wish that i could share with you guys the smell of the rosemary and the garlic and the onions there we go here is the oh, finished <laughs> final final project for this week so delicious I actually immediately had to go home and make myself a mini pork roaster, and I made myself a mini pork roast on the Inquala right when I got home. It I was so text, good. You texted me the picture right when you got home, huh? <laughs> was it good? I, oh, yeah. In two hours, I made the piece and cooked dinner. Yeah. Like, it was, it was on point. Welcome back, you guys. That was delicious. Thank you so much for sharing that meal with us. It was so fun to have Pyro back. He's a great friend and I love having him in the studio and making ridiculous collaboration projects. So, all right, you guys, in order to win this tubing, just make sure you like and subscribe, of course, and then comment on the video and share the video. Make sure you guys check out reveringglass.com and you can join me once a week for the live online glass blowing class. I'd love to see you there. It's included with every level of membership. <laughs> Let's find out who won these tools that have been on my bench for years. The first winner is Owens Glass 5414. Thank you so much. It means the world that you're going down this journey with me. The next winner is Crooked's Fire Pulls 136. Thank you again for watching these videos and commenting and being part of this glass journey with me. The last winner is Styx BV. Thank you so much for watching. I chose three winners because all you guys were amazing with your comments and the things that you said. If you're watching this video, take a second to look back at the last video and make a comment, read some comments. Thank you guys so much. I have so much gratitude for that. So I'm gonna divide these tools up and send them to a few people. Thank you guys again. I'll see you next week with another video.